So in this video, we're taking a look at rounding whole numbers to different amounts of significant figures. If you want to check out any other rounding videos before carrying on with this one, then I'll put some links to them in the description and also a card in the top corner. So for this first lot of questions, we're just looking to round to one significant figure. Well, to find our first significant figure, we're looking for the first digit that isn't a zero. So in this first example of 351, the first significant figure would be the three as it's the first digit that isn't a zero. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a line between that three and the next digit, which is a five. So now we want to determine whether that three is going to stay as a three or round up to a four. And we do that by looking at the digit on the right hand side of the line, which in our case is a five. We're then going to follow our rounding rule. If that digit on the right is five or more, we're then going to round up the previous digit. And if it's less than five, we're going to keep the previous digit the same. Well, we were actually given a five, so that means we're going to round up the previous digit to a four. So what I'm going to do now is actually write the digits underneath. So we said we're going to round that three up to a four, so that's going to go here. But then I need to fill in my placeholders. I basically need to put zeros in the other columns. So underneath the five, I'm going to put a zero, and underneath the one, I'm going to put a zero. So 351 rounded to one significant figure would give us 400. Okay, so we're going to follow that method with the next question. So we've got 7,248. Well, in this one, our first significant figure would be the seven, as again, that's the first digit that isn't a zero. And once I've found that, I'm then going to put my line between that seven and the next digit. So just like before, we want to now determine whether that seven remains as a seven or rounds up to an eight. Well, to do that, we're going to look at the next digit, which is a two. So because it's less than two, that means we're going to keep the previous digit the same. So underneath again, the seven is going to remain as a seven. But then we need to remember to fill in our placeholders. So I'm going to put a zero under the two, a zero under the four, and a zero under the eight. So 7,248 rounded to one significant figure is 7,000. OK, we're now going to look at some examples where we're rounding to two significant figures. So to do this, just like before, we find our first significant figure by finding our first digit, which isn't zero, which in this first example would be six. So six should be our first significant figure. And then we just move on to the right. So if six is our first significant figure. Seven would be our second significant figure. So now, just like before, we're going to put our line between this seven and the next digit. So now we look at the digit on the left of the line again, which was our seven. And we're going to see if that will stay the same or round up to an eight. And again, we use the digit on the right hand side to determine this. So because we've got a three, which is less than five, we're going to keep the previous digit the same. So the seven remains as a seven. So I can write these digits on the left hand side the same again. So that's a six and the seven stays as a seven. And then we just need to fill in our placeholders. So under the three, I'm going to put a zero. And under the nine, I'm also going to put a zero. So 6,739 rounded to two significant figures is 6,700. And for this next example, we've got 8,972. Well, we want to round that to two significant figures again. So again, eight would be our first significant figure with a move to the right, meaning nine would be our second significant figure. So now what we're going to do is put a line between that nine and the next digit, which is a seven. We now want to determine what's going to happen to this nine. Well, we look at the digit to the right of the line, which is a seven. So because it's a seven, that means we're going to round up the previous digit. So that means the nine is actually going to round up to a 10. So what we do in this case is we'd put a zero in the hundreds column directly under the nine that we've just rounded up. And we'd carry that one over to the column to the left into the thousands column. So that eight would become a nine. So we can see in the yellow there, we had 89 has now gone up to 90. So we've rounded that part up. We then need to fill in our placeholders. So under the seven, we need a zero. And under the two, we need a zero. So 8,972 rounded to two significant figures would be 9,000. So well done if you followed along with those examples. We're now going to take a look at some practice questions. So feel free to pause the video here and have a go at these and we'll go through the solutions in just a few moments. 
So for these first questions, we're rounding to one significant figure. So to begin with, we've got 1,413. So for our first significant figure, that would be one, as that's our first digit that isn't zero. We're then going to put our line between the one and the four. So then we look to the right of that line and we have a four. That means we're going to keep the previous digit the same. So the one is going to remain as a one. So underneath, I'm just going to write one. I then need my placeholders. So we're going to put a zero under every column. So our answer to that one would be a thousand. Okay, moving on, we have 25,317. So our first significant figure here would be the two. So our line goes between the two and the five. So we're going to use that five to help determine what happens to the two. So because it's five or greater, that means we're going to round up the previous digit. So the two will round up to a three. So my three goes there, and then I'm just going to fill in placeholders for my other digits. So that one rounded up will be 30,000. For this next couple of questions, we're now rounding to two significant figures. So for this first example of 3,024, three would be my first significant figure. And then I just move over to the right, which means zero would be my second significant figure. So once I've found them, I'm going to put my line between them and the next digit. So we look at that digit on the right, which is a two. So because it's a two, that means we're going to keep the previous digit the same which means the zero on the left hand side of the line is going to stay as a zero. So now I can just copy these digits down. So the three stays there and the zero underneath. And now what we have to do is fill in our placeholders. So again, under the columns, we're just going to write zeros. So zero under the two, zero under the four. So 3,024 rounded to two significant figures would just be 3,000. Okay, moving on, we now have 64,573. So six would be our first significant figure and four would be our second significant figure. So we then draw our line between the four and the five. So now to determine what happens to that four, we look over to the right hand side of the line and we've got a five. So because it's a five, that means we're going to round up the previous digit. So the four will actually turn into a five. So on this left hand side now, we've got six and then five as the four is rounded up. We then need to fill in those placeholders. So underneath the columns, we're going to have a zero again for each one. So 64,573 would round up to 65,000. And for these last couple of questions, we want to round to three significant figures. So for this first question of 5,805, we would have five as our first significant figure, eight as our second significant figure, and zero as our third significant figure. So our line is then going to go between the zero and the five. So we look to the right hand side of the line and we've got a five. That means we're going to round up the previous digit. So that means the zero would actually round up to a one. So on the left, we're going to have five, eight, and then the zero has rounded up to a one. And then we just need a placeholder in the units column. So underneath that five, we're just going to put a zero. So 5,805 rounded to three significant figures would be 5,810. And then for this final example, we've got 10,952. So to round to three significant figures, we've got one as our first significant figure, zero as our second, and nine as our third significant figure. So we're gonna put our line between the nine and the five. So then we look at the digit to the right of that line, which is our five. So because it's a five, that means we're going to round up the previous digit. So we're going to round up the nine to a 10. So what we do in this scenario is you put a zero in that column, and then we're going to carry over that one to the column before. So instead of a zero here, we're now going to have a one. So now we can bring down the one that we had before. So we can see here in the yellow that 109 has now rounded up to 110. So now all I have to do it's filling our placeholders for the other columns. So I'm going to put a zero under that five and a zero under that two. So 10,952 rounded to three significant figures would be 11,000. So well done if you followed along with those questions. And that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please feel free to leave a like and consider subscribing. If there are any topics at all that you'd like me to go through next, then please just let me know down in the comments 
and I'll try to make some videos on those topics as soon as possible. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.